this hangout is on air. Are y'all here? We're here. Hello, hello, hello. Um, let's see. Let's turn on the Q&A. Okay. So hopefully uh, you'll see on the screen a place for two ends to ask questions. Um, ask your audience to submit questions, and they will appear below. So, um, and he read that right off the screen. Yeah. So hopefully if you see that, <laughs> if you have any questions about what we're about to cover, we can get started. So welcome to the uh, Grocery Shop for Free online, free online couponing class. I'm going to take his glasses off. Because oh. they are shining in light. Is that good? <laughs> Let's hope we can. All right, so uh, let's get started. Before we get into uh, how to coupon, um, I want uh, Diane. Why don't you uh, give us a little bit of history of how we started couponing, why we started couponing, how we got here? Well, uh, we started couponing. Um, I don't remember how long ago. A long <laughs> should, time ago. Should be able to count back, but I can't. One of our, uh, I'd always wanted to learn how to coupon. I'd always uh, seen people do really great jobs with it, and I'd asked them how they could do it, you know, and nothing. So I thought, you know, I'm not dumb. I can do this. So I went, and I would get a paper, and I would cut all the coupons out of the paper, and I would put them in a little folder that you throw in your in your purse, you know, like a wallet, and put them in there. And I, you know, I, I just knew I was going to use these coupons, and, you know, Few months later, I'd be cleaning out my purse and pull out that wallet, and all those coupons were nicely, neatly in there, and I had never used a wand. Right. So that wasn't working for me, and so I just kind of gave it up. Well, then uh, one time, our one of our sons came home from a friend's house, and he was like, "Mom, you have got to find out what this Linda's doing because she has all the free pizza and free cereal we can eat when I go over there." Well, cereal was something I didn't buy. <laughs> I had four kids, and they would eat, a, you know, each would eat a box on a sitting, and cereal is ridiculously expensive. So it's not something I bought. And I never bought frozen pizza for pretty much the same reason. So I was like, okay, I'll find out. So I called her, and she said, oh, I keep on shop. And I said, oh, I've always wanted to learn how. And she said, okay, I'll teach you. And so we had her come to our church, and she taught us how, and we've been doing it ever since. And we absolutely, now that we know how to do it the right way, I would never leave coupons in my purse for six months and never pull them out and use them. <clears throat> so, uh, and and over the years, it's helped us. Uh, well, it's helped us feed our family when we went through some really tough times there. You know, 2008, the economy crashed for everyone. Um, and had been couponing, who knows? <laughs> we might have started with that. Um, and, but uh, instead, we were able to feed all of our kids, all of their friends. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we were we were youth pastors for many years. Um, so um, we always had teenagers over the house. So it was nice to always have extra food for them to eat, and, and uh, it was it was great. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's talk about how to coupon. First of all, what is couponing? Couponing is the art of finding the rock bottom price for whatever it is that you want to buy. So that usually involves coupons. It doesn't necessarily have to. You can it can be you can price match something. Um, you can you know there's a, there's a hundred different ways to to pay the least amount of money for whatever it is. Pardon me for whatever it is that you want to buy. And that's kind of what we call couponing. Even if it doesn't involve a coupon, uh, that's that's what we're looking for. So um, it's buying what you need for as cheaply as you can until an awesome deal happens and then you stock up. So uh, so that's what when we talk sorry, about I'm looking for something, y'all. Sorry. When we talk about really couponing, what we're what we're looking at, what we're trying to get you to do is to pay from week to week your weekly trip to the grocery store. Pay as little as possible each week for, for the stuff you have to buy, and then every once in a while, uh, actually I say every once in a while, pretty frequently, there will be an amazing deal and an amazing coupon that all happen at the same time, and then you can get whatever it is that you normally buy for the rock bottom price. I mean, the cheapest that you're going to be able to find it all year. When that happens, uh, that's what we call a stock up price. When that happens, that's when you count and that's when you buy three to six months worth of whatever it is. I have no idea what the dog's doing. Molly, I think, oh, I put a sweater on her because it's cold out and she's trying to take it off. Take it <laughs> she up. keeps rubbing against all the walls of the house. Go lay down. Anyway, um, what he was talking about, one of the things that you that helps uh, people figure out what that rock bottom price is at their store for the things that they buy on a regular basis, and that's a price book. 
And I'm going to put a, a link down here um, in the chat area where uh, that it's a link to, or Aaron did, because we can only be caught um, in one account at a time. Um, and this will take you to how to uh, make your own price book and how to get those uh, rock bottom prices, how to know what they are so yeah. you know when they're, it's the time to buy. Yeah, that, that's what, it's very important that you know what the cheapest something is available. So let's take peanut butter, for instance. Peanut butter is $3 a jar. You can always find it on sale for $2.50, uh, or there's a 50 cent off coupon that'll make it $2.50. Um, so two fifty is kind of what the the normal price is, you know, for you just to buy a jar to have in the pantry. But every once in a while, you'll get a price match that'll make it a dollar. That'll make it a dollar fifty a jar, uh, and then there'll be another coupon that's like fifty five cents off instead of the regular fifty, and then you can get peanut butter for ninety five cents. That's the stock at price. That's when you want to just you want to buy as much as you can, six months worth of peanut butter, as, as much peanut butter as you can get your hands on. And then what that happens is, is that for the next six months, you don't have to worry about peanut butter. Uh, all you do is you kind of keep half an eye out for another really good deal. And if it takes three or four or five months for that really good deal to come, for that really good stock at price to happen again on peanut butter, you don't care. You, you, you've, got a, you've got a stock up and you're ready to go and, and uh, you've got everything that, that you need to kind of weather those, those, those cycles of higher prices. Exactly, and that's why you have to have the price book or at least an idea in your head of exactly what that low price is because if something goes, you know, if something's one week you go to the store and it's $5 and the next week you go to the store and it's $4 and you're like, oh, that's a deal. But in the sales cycle of that product, it may drop down as low as two fifty or two dollars, and you didn't know it because you didn't know that it will. And then the next week, you'll go in and it'll be two fifty, and you will have bought it at the higher price, and then you'll be kicking yourself. So as you as you do this, what what will happen is you'll begin to kind of learn. You've probably got uh, thirty products that you buy uh, that you always have in your regularly. Home. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's always in your home. And so you'll learn what you'll, what you'll start to do is you'll start to pay attention to how much you're paying for each one of those products. And then you kind of get an eye. Okay, you know, these, this, this two liter of Coke cost me $1.50 last week. Now it's costing me a dollar. That's pretty good. Oh, wait, this week it's 88 cents. And then over the course of a couple of months, you'll say, okay, 88 cents is, is the lowest that a two liter can ever be. So when you see uh, the two liter, your favorite two liter on sale for 88 cents, that's when you, that's when you buy a lot. So that you don't have to buy it at a dollar fifty when it's not on sale. You have enough of the ADX and stuff to uh, to keep you to keep you through whenever. So so that that's kind of what we're talking about couponing or stockpiling. That's what we're trying to get you to do is to look for those rock bottom prices. And it, and if it sounds difficult, don't worry. By the end of this, you'll 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 be an expert at this. You'll know how to do it. It's it's, it's easy. It's just a matter of, of doing it. Um. So couponing. Um. <clears throat> We have notes for you. Yeah, I, I, was, I was trying to figure out how to say this, but the number one complaint we get about couponing is that it takes time. I don't have any time. I don't have any time to do it. Well, that's true. It does take a little bit of time, but, but, here, but here's the thing. If somebody was printing dollar bills and putting dollar bills in your Sunday paper and all you had to do was go clip dollar bills out of the paper and put them in your pocket, would you do that? Could you find the time to do that? Most of us could. I know I could. Um, so. That's what I keep in mind when I'm a little rushed and I've got to clip my coupons. If these were dollar bills, I would clip them, and that's essentially what they are because I only clip the coupons that I'm going to want to use uh, or that I'm going to have to use. And so as those coupons uh, come out, I clip them. I uh, you know, will explain what to do with them and, and how, how to deal with them. But uh, that's like clipping money. You know, you're, just, you're clipping money out of the paper and you're getting ready to use it. And don't be confused. Just because he said he clips the ones that he uses doesn't mean that he throws away the rest. We do not throw away the rest. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk you through that. So where do you find coupons? Well, the most common place, there's two of the most common places that you'll find coupons. Number one, in your Sunday paper. Your, uh, if you kind of live out in the country a little bit, you may not, your Sunday paper or you know, whatever little town you live in might not carry uh, Sunday coupons. So you may need to go uh, get the the big you know the big paper that's in the area. So I, we used to live in Glen Rose, which is like two miles outside of town and just in the middle of nowhere. Um, and so we would have to get the Dallas Morning News or the Fort Worth Star Telegram, which were the 
the big, you know, the big papers that are in our area to, to get coupons. Uh, so that may be what you need to do. And then the other most common place that you'll find coupons is on your computer. Uh, printable coupons have really taken over the world of couponing. You'll uh, almost every company out there has a printable coupon they, they want you to use. And new printable coupons come out like every day, every couple hours. Uh, so there's always a ton of printable coupons that you can get that you can print yourself at home. And where are some of the other ways that they can get coupons? He thinks I need notes to tell you. <laughs> you <laughs> can get notes? them out of magazines. You can get them from your friends and family. You can ask them to get them for you or to hold them for you when they come in their newspaper. So you get multiples. Um, you can use Blinkies, which a Blinky is the um when you're at the grocery store and you're standing in front of a particular product um and all of a sudden this little machine is blinking at you and it spits out a coupon those coupons are called blinkies and um and they're usually about something that's right around in there um i'm going to use this notes for a little bit oh peelies peelies that you peel off of a product and use at that time it'll say use me now and you peel that off of the product and use it right then tear pads the tear pads are the um the pads full of small coupons that you just tear off as many as you want and you use those. Those are found in the store too. Um, mailers, things that you get in the mail. You know like the bow pack, the blue envelope that you get in the mail? It'll be full of coupons. Um, not necessarily grocery coupons, but those are important to keep too. But there are mailers like Kroger sends out uh, a mailer of coupons. I get coupons from Kroger all the time. And different stores that you, cr that you shop at will send you coupons to use for products. Um, Direct from the manufacturer. Aaron did a big post here recently about uh, just a ton of brands and manufacturers that you could get uh, coupons from if you mail them. Uh, you just send them an email or a letter to them and say, "Hey, I love your product. I want you know, uh, can you send me some coupons?" And they'll do that. Um, in fact, I uh, used to when my kids were little, and I'd buy diapers from say, you know, the the drugstore. And in the diapers would be a little form to fill out, like a, um, a satisfaction, you know, thing that you'd send back in, and it'd be postage paid and everything. I'd fill it out, send it back in. One time, I was really unhappy with the diapers, and I said so. They sent me, like, five coupons for free diapers, which was awesome, um, but I didn't like them. <laughs> but they will send you coupons if you do that. And then e-coupons. E-coupons are... Coupons that are um, that you can like load to your car, to your phone, to a, an app on your phone, and use when you're in the store. Um, and those you don't have to print or cut out or anything. So there are coupons that you can get that you don't have to sit down and clip and cut out. Um, but my favorite are the ones that come in the paper because I can get multiples of them. When you go to print the coupon, generally the uh, you can get two per computer. So if I've got six or eight computers in the house, I can get you know two per computer, which is great. But most, some of, I mean, I hear some people tell me every day, I don't have a computer, I don't have a printer, I don't have a way to do that. Um, so the newspaper would be the next best thing, right. in my opinion. And you can get a cheap printer for thirty dollars uh, or less. And so if you're gonna, if you're gonna really uh, get into couponing, I would you know, go ahead and go ahead and buy yourself a printer. Uh, it, you're gonna, you're gonna save a lot more uh, because there's just so many printable coupons out there. Right. And we didn't even talk about smartphone apps. There are, there are phone, phone apps like Ibotta where you'll buy something and then they'll give you a rebate. Uh, so I bought a gallon of milk the other day and Ibotta gave me a quarter rebate. And That's hilarious. I never thought about that before. You said I bought a gallon of milk the other day and Ibotta gave me. That's how they get the name. <laughs> I never thought about that before. It never, it never dawned on me because I never heard anybody say it like that. I bought it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I bought it. Yeah. So I anyway, we're going to talk about. Um, about phone apps that will save you money too, not today. Because yeah. um, there's a lot of them and it takes a long, a lot of yeah. time to talk you through them. So, so that's where you find your coupons. That's how you get your coupons. And uh, so you just kind of be aware if you see a good coupon in a magazine or something, you can grab it. Um, and uh, but but like I said, the most common place that you'll find coupons is in your Sunday paper uh, and in your. Um, and you know, on 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 the web, and you just print them out yourself. Now there are also, um, oh, I was going to say something. Well, there are people often complain that that they can't buy the newspapers. Okay, 
so you can't buy a newspaper. Um, our newspapers are a dollar. I understand. We went through time when buying a newspaper for a dollar was out of the question. It was a waste of money, in my opinion. But the deal is, is, is number one, it's not a waste of money because if you can save, you know, if you can save a dollar by spending a dollar, then, you know, you're even. But if you can save more, which I guarantee you, you can save more than a dollar a week by doing that, if, you know, whatever that is. But people say, I, you know, I can't do it. Okay. I believe you, but your parents might get the paper. Your neighbors might get the paper. My kids have taken a wagon through the neighborhood and picked up papers on the curb because people didn't want them and they're full of coupons. Um, I have not dumpster dived. I may have thrown a kid. <laughs> I may have thrown a kid into a recycling dumpster at the church to get some coupons out, but I have not gotten in there myself. I guarantee you that. Um, I probably shouldn't have told y'all that, but the recycling dumpsters are just paper. That's all. And when I say kids, I'm talking teenagers. Um, they're so kids. <laughs> anyway, uh, but you, yeah, uh, the recycling places don't want you to come in there and do it. Um, the newspaper is really tight about holding on to there, so they don't want you to come into their recycling bins either and get them. But there are like mom and pop um, convenience stores that they only, and I say mom and pop, uh, the bigger ones probably have rules is why I'm saying that. Uh, most of the time, they only have to return the cover of the Sunday paper to get the money back from the local paper for it. So they'll pull the covers off, and then they'll haul all the rest of the trash. Well, if you say, I'll come pick those up from you, um, and I'll haul them to the trash, you won't have to do it anymore. They love that. Yeah. We, we used to do that. There was a place in town, there was a restaurant that gave out their newspapers with a pizza. Uh, on Saturday nights to their customers. Well, they were supposed to give out the, <laughs> the newspaper. They never did. And so all these employees every Sunday were hauling these big bunches, like I'm talking 200 newspapers to the trash with all the coupons in it. So we said, we'll come haul them to the trash for you. And they said, okay. So we would take them and take them to church and split them up and then throw the rest away. And that's how come our church ended up in a recycle bin. So I know exactly what was in that recycle bin. <laughs> uh, and always, and a lot of times you can find special deals on Sunday papers. Like in our in our area, until just recently, the Star Telegram would put um, would put the Sunday coupons in the Saturday paper. Did they stop doing that? Okay. Um, no, they they stopped doing the next part. Oh. Um, and just charge a dollar for the Saturday paper. Oh, so they went up. So they went up on the Saturday paper, two fifty. Two fifty, even at the Dollar Tree. And or another way. Oh, thing good is you, is there are certain dollar stores like in our area. The Dollar Tree sells the Sunday paper, regardless of what the, the uh, cover price is. They sell the Sunday paper for uh, a dollar. So we'll go there on Sunday morning and pick up ten papers for ten dollars, and and. Uh, and save, save some money. So can y'all see any? I'm sorry. Can y'all see any of the? I mean, like the the link that I put up earlier. And can y'all? Nobody's commenting, and so we're not sure if anyone's chatting or if anyone's here. <laughs> oh, I, you can see the viewers. Oh, okay. So this, okay, I see. So yeah, if if y'all uh, if y'all have a question, jump in there and ask us, and we'll be happy to answer it. And my our camera is up right here, and we keep looking at the screen instead of at the camera. So I apologize for not looking at you. <laughs> so um, anyway, that's what's the next point? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm telling people to comment here. <laughs> comment here, please. There you okay, go. you should be able to. Say that. All right, so um, the next most point. important part, once you find the coupons, the most important part about couponing is keeping your coupons organized. Uh, it is absolutely vital to keep your coupons organized. If you do not have a good organization system for your coupons, you're just not going to be able to find a good deal. And the reason for that is because rarely do you see a really good sale and a really good coupon happen at the same time. So what usually happens is the coupon will come out four weeks ago, but the product is on sale this week. So you have to be able to go back and get that four-week-old coupon and be able to find it, match it up to today's sale, and then go to the store and get the really great deal. Right. So, so you've got to keep your coupons organized so that you know where – that coupon that came out six weeks ago is and what mm -hmm. coupon that came out two weeks ago is. Right. So you've got to be able to have an organization system uh, kind of, you know, kind of in place so that you can find your coupons. So Diane, how do you organize your coupons? 
Well, he's going to say that, but I don't really. I, I'm, I'm awful because I'm not an organized person. And I've tried 15 different ways of how I want to organize my coupons. And that's what I was going to say was whatever works for you, because maybe you're very organized and you have everything done just right. Well, that's awesome. And that's great for you. I went to the store one time, uh, the lady that taught me to keep on, she called me one evening and she said, I'm fixing to run up the store. Um, do you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so it was the first time I'd ever followed a real couponer to find out how they did it. I got to the store and she had an empty buggy waiting on me and then she had another buggy and in that buggy she had four boxes of coupons just laying in the bottom and that's where her coupons were she could sift through them and organize she knew exactly where they were they didn't look like they made any sense to me now um, I have put them in baggies and marked on the baggies what they are I have um, I've used uh, folders where I just pull them out and cut out the ones I need when I need them instead of cutting them all out to begin with. I've cut them all out to begin with and put them in a notebook. Um, I have, my favorite is I have a beautiful pink notebook I bought at Walmart and uh, it has a zipper and it has a long handle and it has a short handle and it's got a place for pens and pencils and, and scissors and paper clips and it's got another compartment I can keep all my policies in and then it's got um, I put in uh, baseball card holders that I got at Dollar Tree for a dollar, and I filled up. I filled it up with that, and then I sorted them by the areas of the store, like um, dairy and frozen food and uh, and canned food and that kind of thing. Is how I sorted them in my notebook, and then I put them like that. And then I took my notebook with me all the time. Some people say, you know, do you do that or do you keep them at home and just pull the ones that you have? And uh, I, I like the method of taking them all to the store with me because if I go to the store and I'm shopping and I run across a deal that I didn't know about, um, something that just happened to pop out at me while I'm at the store and I don't have my coupons, but I know that I have a coupon for that and it would make it a really good deal. Then I have to go all the way back home and get the coupon and bring it back to the store. Whereas if I have all my coupons with me, then I can take advantage of that deal right then. Some of you have little kids at home and little kids in the store, and they're not going to tolerate running home to get a coupon and coming back and doing it all over again. Right. <laughs> so I get that. So, <clears throat> so basically, the, the the two main ways to, to organize your coupons is just like where she where she said, well, you cut every coupon and you take every coupon with you to the store. I if if I did that, I would go crazy. That's just too much. I can't handle. It. So. Uh, what I do <clears throat> is oh, and our daughter she keeps her, hers in a um, in a Walmart bag. That's just crazy. <laughs> it makes me nuts. But she can, she has them all thrown in a Walmart bag, and they're in her car, and they're all cut out, and she can pull out any coupon she needs whenever she needs it. She knows exactly where it is. No. Makes me crazy. Not not for me. So <laughs> uh, so here's so here's the method I use, and, and if you're inter if you're interested, we just did a podcast on different coupon organization methods. You can see that at groceryshopforfree.com slash podcast, and you can read that. We interviewed, uh, we interviewed Tracy Fox from Penny Pension Mom, and, and she walked us through a couple ways to do it. So, so here's what I do. I have, I have that. I have a coupon wallet. And what this is, is this is just a, uh, a little Hendaflex or Phyloplex folder you see in there, and it's got all these little, uh, what do you call them, all these little spaces and envelopes in there. And so uh, every space is labeled uh, frozen food and, and meat and, you know, just different different places for coupons. And so all the coupons are in there. And then um, I've got... I'm putting got, up another link on how to organize coupons. If I hope you all can see these links. I, I wouldn't put it there. I'd put it on the, on the Google Plus page. Okay. I'm going to go put some stuff. Okay. And then, um, so what I do is uh, as each week, as each week's coupons come out, I look through... And I clip out all the coupons that I know I'm going to use. So, like, um, uh, oh, this weekend there was a $2 off coupon for Garnier uh, shampoo or conditioner. Garnier shampoo and conditioner is $2.50 at Walmart. It's a $2 off coupon. You can get them for $0.50. Cents. I knew I was going to use that, that coupon because it's shampoo or conditioner for $0.50. Cents. That's pretty darn cheap. So, right. um, so I knew I was going to clip that. I knew I was going to use that coupon. So I clipped it and I put it in my little... My little folder here, um, and then uh, so I took all the ones that I that I uh, did.
didn't clip, all the coupons that I didn't clip, and I put them all together, and I put them in a folder, uh, and the folder was marked with the date. So January 11th was the date those coupons came out, and we've got a, uh, a filing cabinet in our office, and we just put all the January 11th coupons in the uh, in, in the filing cabinet so that if I need more coupons later, uh, I, can, I can go back and find them. Uh, and then the coupons that I knew I was going to use, I run up to the store and I use them. Um, and the way that it works is, is uh, as I'm going through the, uh, as I'm going through the, uh, the supermarket, or as I'm going through Walmart, that's where I shop. Uh, as I put the products that I have coupons for in my buggy, I take the coupons out of my little folder here, and I put them in the front pocket of my folder. So I've got this front pocket here. It's just for the coupons I'm going to use uh, on checkout. And then, so that when I'm done and I go up to the register, all the coupons that uh, that I've used for the, for the products that are in my buggy, they're all in one place. So they were organized nice and neat so I could find them when I was at the store, and now they're organized where they're all together so that I can scan the cashier a pile of coupons once they check me out and they can, they can check that out. So hopefully that makes sense. And to me, that, that's, that's a lot easier for me to do. It's a lot easier for me to uh, use. And then if in four to six weeks there's some awesome sale coming up that I didn't foresee um, for a coupon that came out this week, I can go back and get all of this week's coupons, get that folder that says January 11th, find the coupon I need, and cut them out and put them in my little buggy here and, and – uh, and, uh, and head to the store and use them. So everything's organized, everything's nice and neat. I know where everything is. I know where my new coupons are. I know where my old coupons are. So that's what you're, that's what you're looking for. You're just looking for whatever method works for you. You're looking for the way to keep your coupons organized so that, <coughs> pardon me, so that when, um, uh, when it's time for you to use your coupons, you know how to use them. Right. Uh, somebody saying it's choppy? Yeah, I just asked her if it was still choppy. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so what's the next one? Um, before we get to the next one again, I just want to stress because we're going to repeat this phrase a lot as we get as we go through the coupon class. Your coupons have to be organized. If your coupons aren't organized, you're just you're not a coupon. You're not you're not going to save anything. Effective. An not effect, effective. An effective coupon. Coupon. You'd be more effective if you were organized. Right. So he is pretty effective because he is organized. Trust me. Okay, what's next? Uh, common hurdles to coupon. That's you. Okay. Um, so, and again, we've, over the years, we've dealt with a lot of couponers. We've dealt with a lot of uh, new couponers that are just trying to learn how to do it and they don't really know how to do it. And there's, there's a few... There's a few hurdles that are common to every to every new coupon. Uh, first up is you can't find that coupon that you need. Um, you know, I said it, it means that you're not organized, <laughs> I and mean, then that's really what it is. If uh, you know some coupon came out, now there are a few instances where maybe you just didn't get a coupon. Some coupons are regional. Most coupons um, are regional for real. So, like in our area last week, we got a we got a. Beautiful coupon, yeah. three dollars off of any Huggies diapers. For real. You never see three dollars off Huggies diapers. That's, that is a huge coupon, but it was regional. I don't know how and what percentage of the, of the country it was in, but it wasn't at hundred percent. Um, so in your area, you may have only gotten a dollar off coupon. Well, that's why you can't find that coupon. It's regional. There's just nothing you can do about it. Um, but usually, if you as a coupon and you can't find a coupon, it's because you're just not organized. You, you know, things aren't dated, things didn't get put away. You've got your coupons in a pile in your, you know, in your bedroom, in the corner of your bedroom. You know, you're, you're never going to be, be able to find anything like that. So keep your coupons organized. Um, the next common complaint we get is that people are couponing, but uh, they say, well, we can't seem to save. We're not really, it doesn't seem like we're saving any money when we coupon. Well, Okay, so a couple things that are number one, you're probably not planning your trips to the to the coupon to the to the store as well as you should be, and we will uh, we will discuss how to do that a little bit more in depth later. But before you walk into your grocery store, you need to have a plan. You need to know what's on sale. You need to know what coupons you're going to use. You need to know what you plan on walking out of there with, and that'll keep you from getting. Um, That'll keep you from making impulse buys. That'll keep you from adding, putting things in your cart that uh, that you uh, shouldn't have been. 
uh, which I mean, we're all guilty of that. Um, I found it. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was so um, now, now I will say this: there will be times, especially in the beginning, when you're when you're couponing, that you won't save as much as as you probably should. Uh, first reason for that is just an experience. You, the longer you do this, the better you get at it. But the other thing is that stockpiling. Uh, when you're first starting uh, couponing, you don't have a stockpile of anything. Um, so when Beans go on sale for a quarter of a can. You know, in a normal week, you may, you know, beans may be a dollar a can. You may only buy two cans, so that's two dollars. But the week that they're a quarter of a can, you may spend five dollars on beans that week because you want to stock up. Now, more total dollars came out of your pocket, five dollars versus two dollars, but uh, you've got a stockpile of beans now. What is it? I mean, I can't do the math. That's twenty. 20 cans if you're using oh, two why weeks. Look at me. Yeah. So that's 10 weeks worth of worth of coupon worth of beans that you got for, for five dollars, where in the past uh, two dollars would have only got you you know a week's worth. Um, so so yeah, there are times at the beginning that you might have to uh, that you might be spending more total dollars out of pocket, but you sh your stockpile should be growing. And as your stockpile grows, uh, like I said in the beginning. Eventually, it gets to the point where, uh, like right now, I, I, actually, it's not true anymore, but for the last six to eight weeks, we did not buy toilet paper unless uh, it was just dirt, dirt, dirt. It dirt was cheap. so much longer than that because we yeah. had so much, we just didn't need it. Yeah, I, I, think I, mean, we brought it I think we brought it with us when we moved in our new place. So, yeah, it's um, been since October or September. Yeah. It really, I mean, it, when you and, it's, those, and that's because, sorry, that's because we had a huge stockpile of toilet paper. We had, right. Like 504 packs of toilet paper is crazy. You can hit those um, times where you know you've got so much of a stockpile that you don't need to buy anything else. So yeah, building the stockpile it's going to take you a little bit of time and a little bit of effort uh, and a little bit more money to start with. But then when that next deal comes around, you may have enough to last you for the next next deal that comes around. Uh, was it Mary Hoover? We did a podcast with, and Mary Hoover was talking about how. She once uh, one time a month they live or one month out of the year they live off their stockpile. They don't so buy anything at all. That's coming up two weeks the podcast two weeks from now. Oh, and I'm actually really excited about about the podcast because it's really gave cool. it away. So so she <laughs> does she does a Friday uh, not Friday, a February freeze and a September savings. I don't know, maybe I, but February freeze is what comes what come So in February, they don't spend a dime on food. They just live off their stockpile. And that may seem crazy to you now. Like if you had to go a whole month without buying groceries, uh, that just would seem nuts. Uh, but with the exception of produce, because that, that tends to go bad, um, they just they don't buy anything because they've got so much uh, that they've stockpiled over the years from coupon over the months from, from couponing and stuff. And if you're new to couponing, I, that may sound crazy to you now, but it's really not. I and mean, you'll be surprised at how quickly your stockpile will grow. If we needed to go six months, six months. If we needed to go six weeks without buying food for some reason, we could do it. And I, and I, and I think, and, and I sometimes I, I wonder, I worry because our stockpile isn't very big. But then I go and look at it, and I'm, you know, if, if we needed to do it, we could do it. It's just that's just what happens when we coupon. You find great deals, you get a bunch of them, um, you know. So like this week, uh, I talked about the Garnier shampoo. Uh, most couponers have in their pantry. A six month supply of shampoo and conditioner now that they, they've Easy. spent almost nothing on. Um, Sam Alex says, uh, what, I, I hope I said your name right, Sam Alex. Sam Alex. Uh, do you, what do you do when you have limited room for stockpile? You know, one, not too long ago, four or five years ago, we actually had to move into an apartment for a year. Mm -hmm. And it was a very small apartment. And I, that was the first thing I was thinking. I was like, where am I going to put my stockpile? Well, um, I took part of our bedroom closet and I put a shelf in there and I put uh, another, I think, put two shelves in there and I used that. I used the top of the closet. Um, I used the well, coat closet. Yeah, this is what this is what, what, what we thought was so cool. We had this coat closet that was like, I mean, it's very small. like 18 inches wide. It was just, I mean, you could fit maybe two coats in there. It was just really, really narrow. 
And so we, we measured it and we went to Walmart and we happened to find Sam these Alex. really Sam Alex. Sam Alex, sorry. Thank you. We, we found these really narrow uh, kind of plastic shelves. That, at Walmart. That at Walmart, they, they just they fit right in there perfectly, fit. and we were able perfectly. to utilize this whole all the space in this in this little coat closet, and uh, it was just perfect. So we had everything stacked all the way up, all the way to the ceiling, all the way to the floor. We had stuff in the floor, but it was all still stacked. I mean, you go back and look at my shopping trips from back then. I mean, I did. We lived there when we did, uh, you know, frozen foods. Uh, there's a frozen food month where everything's on sale. The canned food month, January, and and all the um, uh, Kleenex and, and all that stuff. I mean, we were there during all those months where we were just stocking up. I mean, I remember taking one picture in the floor by the by the front door, and uh, there must have been 80 cans, you know, there, and all of those fit in that closet with everything else. So when it comes to couponing, when it comes to saving money, when He's it comes to stockpiling, what you're going to find is it has very little to do with uh, has very little, little to do with ability. It has everything to do with motivation. Yeah. Um, if if you're motivated to save money, you're, you're going to find a way. If you're motivated to to have a stockpile, you'll find a way. If you're motivated to uh, you know to take control, and this is what that's what this is all about. If you're motivated just to take control of your the the grocery portion of your family's budget, you can do it. Uh, you can you can cut your grocery budget by fifty percent easy. We're really blessed right now. We moved into a place here not long ago, and we have a huge uh, pantry for the kitchen, which is yeah, great. I love huge, it. Ridiculous. And there's a huge pantry for the stockpile. And basically for that stockpile, it's only for the health and beauty aid. So it's fun because I have another closet, and it's full of, um, of the extra kitchen stockpile because I like to keep – because I know that I, don't have, I only have one kid left at home, but when you have kids at home – you don't want to put your stockpile in your pantry because they will open a new one of everything every time they go in there. And I, I, I had at one point, I swear I had 16, 16 jars of pickle relish open in the fridge and 14 mustards. I mean, they just get a new one out and open it every time. So I keep stuff in the pantry that they can get to and then everything else is put out of sight so that they can't open it until they need a new one. Yeah. So somebody in the room is saying they can't see it. Yeah, if you should, uh, you, sh you if you're on the Google, the Google Plus page, you should be see a video screen. Click play, and you should. This she's on this page right here. Just push that play button at the top. Yeah. Push Are the you play. on mobile? I don't know what it looks like on yeah, mobile. But mobile, same thing. If you, if you're on our Google that Google Plus Hangout page, just click on the little arrow and turn it Sam on. Sam Alex said she clicked on it from her um, email. email. Yeah, same thing. All right, um, and. Uh, but you can you can oh. push the button at the top of the page, the the arrow, and it will start playing. I think probably at the beginning though. I don't know. And then also the uh, several years ago we bought a, a chest uh, a chest freezer, um, and so now you know anytime that we there's meat on sale or frozen vegetables or you know who I, mean, I don't even know what else. Uh, now it goes in the now it goes in the chest freezer and kind of it kind of goes out of out of way out of the way and in fact the chest freezer uh, the two best things that we that we bought for our, our stockpiles number one the chest freezer but number two are um, my my wife likes Sorry. the Folgers game for her ringtone I love that song <laughs> but number two it's not seal meal what what is it I always forget oh fresh saver fresh and, saver and meal saver. So it's no, it's, it's, fresh it's the it's the vacuum seal system where you know you put you put meat and they're stuff. fun too. Yeah. <laughs> I love to put. I do it. And he's like, don't do that. Don't do that. It doesn't need it. I'm like, no, no, no. I wanna I wanna get all the air out of it. And I wanna. He's like, but you're wasting the bag. I'm like, no, I'm not. Because we can just open it back up. But I like I like using the machine. So fun. so we we'll buy you know we'll buy say 20 pounds of chicken breast because chicken breast is normally 250 uh, a pound. Uh, and somebody has it on for 99 cents a pound, boneless, skinless. Well, that's you know that's my run to the store and get that because that's about cheap as you can get it. So we'll buy 20, 30, 40 pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast, and then vacuum seal them in their individual, you know, in the individual plastic, and throw them in the chest freezer. And I swear to you, right now I've probably got six months old chicken breast in that freezer uh, down at the bottom of it. In fact, I should probably clean that chest freezer out. Probably. Okay, but listen, but listen. Okay. So you can't afford a newspaper. How in the world can you afford 
afford a chest freezer. I gotcha. Okay, so here's the deal. We actually um, used to, when we had all the kids at home, we would buy um, at the top of the page in the box with their picture, hit the triangle button. Yes, Michelle, exactly. If you can't hear you, hit play. Thank you, Michelle. Um, okay, so when we had all the kids at home, we had three boys and and a girl. So when we had all the kids at home, I used to like to find a really good deal at the butcher. And they had these awesome deals where it's like, buy, you know, buy this set of food and last you nine months and we'll throw in this and a chest freezer. Right. Well, I couldn't turn that down. Plus, when we had the kids at home, that was a godsend to have all that meat. It was cheaper and we didn't have to buy meat for nine months. And so, and I got a free chest freezer out of it. And I, we're calling it a chest freezer. It's one of the longer ones, not the short, not the little, you know, it's one of the longer ones. And then um, a friend of mine moved and she gave me her old fridge. And so I put that outside uh, in the garage. And so I have an extra fridge with a freezer on top. I have the chest freezer. When the kids were home, I actually had a small chest freezer and the big one. And uh, so I've got two refrigerators and two freezers. And that's how um, I don't need all that now. But we use it. We put the leftovers in one fridge right. and the regular fridge. <laughs> we, have, we have two fridges, each with their own freezer and chest. Yeah, so and, and we only have one kid left at home. But when we had kid. all the kids at home and the teenagers from yeah. the youth group, we really needed it all. And sometimes it wasn't enough for them. Right. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we, we've had, <laughs> we have four children. And so there were, you know, for 20 years, all four children lived with us. And we're down to just one now. Uh, praise God. And um, <laughs> and he's almost cooked. He's seventeen yeah. and a half. Um, so so we kind of got off track a little bit. So the the third most common complaint we get from uh, couponers is, uh, especially new couponers, is they get overwhelmed. They're just you know it's like oh my gosh, this is so complicated. I can't do it. And uh, if that's you, if that's what you're feeling right now, if that's what you are going to start feeling in the next couple of weeks, yeah, don't try to do everything. Just start small. Just yeah. do a couple things. We're going to give you a homework assignment here in a little bit, but you just want to, you just want to start small. You want to uh, use a coupon, <laughs> you right. know, you want to, it, and there is something psychological, psychological, whew, psychological about walking up to a cashier and handing them a coupon. There's something that changes in your mind because when that happens, you you realize oh okay they're they're not going to uh, scream at me they're not going to think that I'm trying to get something for free they're not think I'm yeah trying to scam you just them. have to try it right so so that changes when you actually go up there and hand them a coupon and then the, the next time when you hand them ten coupons you see that, that okay they they can handle ten coupons and then the next week and you do five price matches and twenty coupons and they have to call a CSM over to to get the uh, to get the approval of the thing, and you realize, okay, well, that's that's not that big a deal. You know, I survived that, and I got a really good deal. And so you just—it's just the process of doing it, of using a coupon, of, of going to your store, of of just getting used to it. Um, and so we don't expect you. And you should not expect your your grocery bill to drop by fifty percent this week. Uh, if you can save uh, two or three dollars this week. You're after a fantastic start. It's that, two or three dollars more right. than you would have saved. Plus, and and we will tell you, like you said, we're going to tell you to start small. If you want to start with the drug stores, start with the drug stores. If you want to start with the grocery stores, start with the grocery stores. We're going to teach them separately, right. and we're going to tell you not to learn one or, or actually actively try and work one until you get the other one down because you've got to feel comfortable in one before you do the other because they're two different animals and they – Play two different games so you need to know and Walmart's all it's own, it's, its own thing but and there are we will teach a separate class just for Walmart yes. next week and there are lots of, of facets and things that you can do and you can stack and you can do more and you can add more and you can take more off after and you can get overage and you can do all this there's a lot of that but it's it's a building process you use a coupon yeah. And then you use two coupons, and then maybe you add match, like you said, and then maybe you use an app to get cash back, and maybe you get money to use on your next trip, and maybe you get overage given back to you. All of it's slowly building. You don't walk in there and say, well, I'm going to add match these five things. Here's 27 coupons, and I right. expect to get $10 back. Right. Don't do that because you're going to be, you know, when the cashier goes, no. 
Oh, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And you're going to want to pull your hair out. And and when you're looking at everything online, and like today, I was like, I kept pushing him out the door because I was like, do you see all these deals these people are getting? There's 49 cent blankets at Walmart, and there's Dora the Explorer electric toothbrushes for 60 cents or something. All this crazy stuff. And so I was like, go, 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 go. Go see if they if they have any at our store. And he went, and he said, eh, there's nothing here. They're all gone. And I'm like, oh, okay. When you make up your big deal and then you go and that stuff's not there, that will frustrate you. So, again, it all is just slow starting. Right. And then you learn sometimes you get the deal, sometimes you don't get the deal, and it's all okay. And if you can find a coupon buddy, if you can find someone, a family member, or maybe just someone in your area that, that wants to learn how to coupon too and you guys can kind of figure it out together, that will go a long way yeah. towards towards you just feeling more comfortable doing it. I remember when I first started, I told you we learned with the ladies from the church, and I'd jump in the car and say, I just left Kroger, and so-and-so and such-and-such -and -such happened, and did you see this deal? And she, and, you know, my friend would go, I just left Albertsons. Did you know that they had, yeah. you know, and we'd share, and that was fun. That was fun for us. And we could say, oh, this Walmart's out of all of these. Oh, well, the Kroger had them. You'd go over there, and you could, you know, so it's, it is fun to have someone to be able to do yeah. it with. And there's probably a Facebook group for your everything for couponers <laughs> in your city, right? I mean, there, there, there probably is, and you can join that and kind of get in the conversation of what's going on locally for you. Um, so, um, okay, the last thing we need to do, we'll, we'll give you your homework here in just a minute. Let's talk a little bit about our site. Um, GrocerShopForFree.com is our main site. My, my site is GrocerShopForFree at TheMart.com. That's the one I work on. It's all about Walmart. Would love to see you uh, there. Um, we, you, you should probably sign up for our daily emails. Uh, we send an email out once a day with um, all of the whatever deals we posted that day. And so, like in the last week, we posted fifty cents, fifty cent Kellogg's uh, cereal, fifty cent uh, Cheerios. Uh, how to get those coupons mailed to you? Trying to remember all the fantastic deals. Oh, the 50 cent Garnier. Um, and free stuff. Oh, oh God, it's just all kinds of free. And so we, we put that we put that stuff out every. What's his name? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sam Alex and I are having a chat. Hi. <laughs> hey. Tell me. How are y'all? Tell What's me his, his name. name. I'll say his name. Okay. Um, I did want to put up a link here. A couple of links. One is this one is going to be how to read a coupon matchup. A lot of times people will say, I clicked it and I clicked it and I clicked it and nothing printed. Not all coupons that we said we said at the beginning, not all coupons are printable. So I'm going to put up a link on how to read a coupon uh, matchup when you see one and it says, you know, SS and RP and uh, ECB and all these kind of crazy things. I'm going to put up how to read it so you'll know when you see them online and on our sites exactly what they mean. Right. So that's what that link is. Tell us his name and we'll say hi to him. Um, and then. Um uh, yes, yeah, so sign up for a daily. Then we have a Facebook room that's just for people that have gone through this class, or at least at least that's how it started. I think more people, have <laughs> more people have joined it, right? More people have joined it, right? And we'll put that link uh, in this room here in just a minute. Not, we forgot to get it for you, but so so there's a there's a there's a Facebook group just for people who have gone through this class, so that you can ask questions and you can figure out what it is that uh, if you run into a problem, yeah, it's it's a very quick way to get hold of us because we get notifications and somebody posts in there and we can we can you know very quickly get in there and answer your question and it's your it's just, it's just your direct line to us and it's your direct line to other people who've gone through the class and who have been doing this and and feel a little bit more comfortable doing it. I just put up another link on um, or fixing to it takes a minute to post um, how to. Uh, or what all about coupon lingo you know people talk about uh, cues which are coupons and they you know ISO and UFT and all this stuff that you read in different rooms and you don't know what that that stuff means what a peely is what a blinky is all those things right. that's going to be in the coupon lingo and then uh, another one one thing we wanted to say was it's so important to uh, know your store's policy. I cannot tell you how important it is to know your store's coupon policy. Before you come back next week, I'd like for you to know your favorite store's coupon policy. Find it, look it up. My site, GrocerShopForFree.com, has um, most of the store's coupon policies on uh, on my page. Uh, it's the second menu bar item over, and it says store coupon policies or something. But um, 
find your stores coupon policy, know your stores coupon policy. And this, uh, this link I'm putting up now is six things you need to know about your stores coupon policy. Because if you don't know your policy and you go in there and you expect them to do this, that, or the other thing, and they say no, you don't know if, oh, that's the rule. I mean, because the Walmart cashiers, Lord, the Walmart cashiers, the managers, the CSMs, every person in that store will tell you some crazy thing mm -hmm. that they do or do not do. And what they do or do not do is in the policy. If you have the policy in your hand, you can say, but the policy says, the online corporate written policy right. says. I don't know why that is, but for some reason, Walmart associates feel far more comfortable making policies up. Making than, them up. I mean, making them up. Than any other store. <laughs> they say the craziest you know, thing. And I don't, I don't really know why. I don't really know why that is. Um, so, um, they just get something in their head. But but you just you just have to know the policy. But and I'll tell you, we're gonna talk about this again next week too, but um, I will tell you, you, you catch a whole lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Your grandma was right. The thing is, is right. when you stand when you stand in front of a cashier and say, You don't know what you're talking about, that is wrong. This is this and that's that the first thing they're gonna do is buck up and they're gonna say, Nope, not doing anything you want no matter what you say in their head, this is what they're saying. It's like if you were sitting at your desk at work and somebody walked into your office and said, You don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you about your job and there's some person off the street. That's not gonna sit well with you. But if they came in and said, Hey, I think your policy says this, can you look into this for me? If I you know, whatever it is, help them help you. Okay? And that's important. Okay, so your homework policy. Your homework no, there's policy. no policy in the homework. Homework for this week. <laughs> find um, three newspapers. Find three Sunday papers that have coupons and figure out which you know which one which are the in ones in your area, area that have them. Buy three of them uh, and set or up. Get three from friends and neighbors. Whatever. Get get three sets of coupons from this weekend's coupons, and find a way. Set up a way to organize your coupons. So whatever way you're going to use, whatever way you think is going to be best for you. Figure it out. Think it through. Whatever it is you need to buy. If you need to buy one of these little coupon, this this cost me. Actually, this one's free, but they, they're like $4 at Walmart. You can go to the little office supply section and get them. Um, whatever method you're going to use to keep your coupons organized, find it, set it up, and, and, uh, and know how to do it. And then clip a few coupons and go use them on products that you are going to buy this week anyway. So if you normally buy Jiffy, Peanut butter is it's Jif, Jif peanut butter, and there's a Jif peanut butter coupon. Skippy, you whatever. were thinking of Skippy. Skippy, whatever you know, whatever you're gonna buy, if it, whatever coupon that came out this Jiffy week. Jiffy pop popcorn. Whatever coupons that come out this week, the products that you normally buy, put that coupon out and do use it. Yeah. It doesn't. I would just just use, use a use coupon. It. Just use, use a, a coupon. Use a coupon on something you would normally buy. Is what he's saying. Don't don't get a coupon and spend. Use it on something that you wouldn't buy any any other way, unless it's free. If the coupon makes it free, ah, go ahead. Right. So uh, buy three papers, set up a way to get your coupons organized, use coupons. That's your homework Absolutely. assignment for this week. And, uh, and then uh, next week, you know, before we start the class uh, on you know, next week's class, in the little chat box, tell us what you bought. Yeah. yeah what is yeah. We, we'd love to hear that. Yeah. Or, or if you, once we get the link to our, oh, let uh, me get that now. Once we get the link to our uh, coupon, uh, our Facebook room, you can uh, you can put it in there. We we love to, we love to hear when new couponers start. Yes. Learning a coupon. We, yes. we really just think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, and uh, we want you to we want you to save money. Yes. So really quick, we're just going to give. We've got a few minutes uh, left until the end. If anybody has a question, type You're it in the chat. You're not going to be able to see it because I'm. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. We'll take a second. I'm trying um, to get the thing up. Oh good. I'm going to security code. Um. Put it in the chat box and we'll we'll spend a few minutes answering questions. Yeah, if anybody has them, we'd like to answer any of your questions if you have any. I hope you can't hear what's going on next to us. That dog has decided to eat. Oh look, it changed. Yes, it does. It's, Facebook wants me to lock put my security generated code in for it me changes, to get to the thing. Changes every changes thirty seconds. Every twenty seconds. And it's like what? It changes while you're typing it in. Okay. Uh, so does any, did anybody have it? Oh, wait. Okay. I'm going to switch back to see if anybody has questions. No. Okay. No. All right. I'm getting the link as quickly as absolutely possible. Uh, 
on my computer to the uh, couponing Facebook room so that you can share your questions and your victories. Victories. Okay, here we go. Got it. Okay, so this is to the couponing room, uh, and you can or group, and you can join that well, right now. How do you know what coupon is in which folder if they are not clipping them? Oh, because uh, each folder has its own, has its own date on it. We'll show you that next week too. On the on the edge no. of the insert, the the date is on there. But I think what she's saying is, how can you find one? Um, that was from someone else watching. <laughs> um, if I think if it, uh, she's asking, how do you find one? Okay, so in the coupon matchup, the coupon matchup link that I put up on how to read a coupon matchup, it's going to tell you there's a dollar off of one coupon in say the December 16th SS. And that's going to mean that there's a dollar off one coupon in the December 16th Sunday paper um, uh, smart, smart source, smart source coupon. Paper. Yeah, smart source in, insert in your Sunday paper. Um, and you're going to have them, if you don't put them all out, I put them in a filing cabinet and in, in uh, file folders, letter E, with the uh, name, with the date on each one. And so it'll say December 16th, it'll say 12, 16, 14, and it'll say SS or RP or whichever one it is. And I put them in a file folder and I throw them in the, in the filing cabinet. So then when I see that that's the coupon I need, then I can just open my file, filing cabinet, find that thing, and pull out one of them, one of the booklets, and then cut out what I need, however many I need. Next week we'll tell you all about um, how a little bit more about organizing. Them, keep them together and how to pull out the ones that you need. Any no. more questions? Go up. Uh, that, no, that was it. Okay. All right. So I think we've run a couple of minutes over. If there are, well, no, we actually have two minutes. But if there are no more questions, we'll let you go two minutes early. Right. So, uh, so again, go find some, you, you're going to have to put some work into this class in order to, to, to you know, get anything out succeed. of it. Succeed. Right. In order to succeed, go find some papers. Uh, go figure out a way to get your coupons organized and use a couple of coupons. You, you, this is a big deal. This is, you know, big journey. Start with small steps. These are the small steps you have to, you have to take to it. And we are on Facebook and Twitter all day long. We, we, yeah. we have email addresses on our websites that you can reach us easily. Just email us and ask us anything, anytime. Join that Facebook room and then our group. I always call them rooms. Join that Facebook group and ask any questions in there. Anybody in there is happy to answer because they they either just learned or they are learning too. So it's a very helpful place. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we will see you next week at the same time. It's 5 o'clock our time. Same bat time. Same bat time. Same same bat channel. Batman freak. So, uh, yeah. So let's... Uh, Let's let's meet together back then. Next week it's all about Walmart. Uh, Walmart is a strange animal. You need a whole class just for Walmart. So that's what we're looking forward to doing next week. Anything else? Nope, that's it. All right, sign off. All right, bye, y'all. Bye.